This guy has attention to detail. See what I did with that? Bloop, bloop. Darren Ravel, Action Network business reporter, memorabilia collector. And he joins us on the program. Just saw where ESPN is saying Michael Jordan selling the team, the Charlotte Hornets. What, uh, what do you think Mike's going to walk away? Why do you think he's selling? Just a great time, right? When he first bought the Hornets, Dan, um, he, I think he put down uh, like less than 10% because he was Michael Jordan, which is what he should have done. I mean, that's what that's what you do. Um, and, uh, and then over time, he got to 80, 90%. And uh, then he sold off to, to Gabe Plotkin a little bit of it. And Gabe's one of the guys who's buying it today. Uh, an unbelievable job in terms of like, there's been things at Michael Jordan where he's made some mistakes, probably that he didn't get an actual piece of Nike might be his biggest mistake, right? Like <laughs> instead of getting just royalties. He did pretty um, well though, Darren. Yeah, he made more than a billion dollars on Nike, but still, but still you always got to try to, uh, how could is this better? perpetuity for Michael after Michael passes away where his kids, grandkids, yeah, he's got a lot. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. He's, he's making money on the air Jordan brand forever. Okay. Um, but with this Hornets thing, and maybe you'll disagree with me here. I don't think his legacy is tarnished by the fact that the Hornets stunk throughout his tenure. Um, I, I think because there's such a, disparity between being the greatest basketball player of all time. I always tell people just because you're a great player doesn't mean you're a great manager or coach, or in this case, Obvious. a great, great yeah. owner. And sometimes you, 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 he could control what he did on the floor. He can't control this. He can't make the Charlotte Hornets better by just willing them. It's got to be decisions that he's made. And he's made some of the worst draft picks in recent basketball history, Darren. Yeah, and I, I would I would say his time with the Washington Wizards, Dan, probably tarnished his legacy more than anything that he did as a Hornets owner. So, again, I you know I I think the fact that he's going to come away with, uh, we're talking probably total eight hundred fifty to nine hundred million dollars net here. Um, I think it's a it's a good move and didn't really kill him too much as far as his name goes. Is Jordan a memorabilia business onto himself? For sure. Um, although obviously there's intricacies on what's big, what's not. You know, his 1986 Fleer rookie card in a PSA 10, so that's the highest graded. There's 323 of those. Um, and they're now about 180,000 a piece. During the pandemic, it went as high as 786,000. Um, you know, but there are what pieces are you buying? And I think I always say when there's real one off pieces, when they're when it's one of one that's really where you're in good shape. And, you know, these these flu game shoes that just sold again for the second time. So they first sold in 2013 straight from the ball boy, uh, Preston Truman, for $105,000. And then they just sold for $1.38 million. And I think the reason for that over time, so this is not just inflation, is, you know, you just look at there. it's one of one. It's Jordan's most iconic game and to own a piece of that that's authenticated, that's real. Um, I think the game use stuff, the good game use stuff, um, particularly for the past when they didn't wear four to five jerseys and eight to 10 shoes. <laughs> but is anybody, uh, anybody close to Jordan in, in, in any other sport? Uh, I mean, Gretzky's Jersey from his last, um, you know, game with the Rangers, his last NHL game just sold for about 750,000. I think Jordan's kind of on his own, although like, you know, I collect tickets and the, the, the bigger ticket than Jordan's debut is Jackie Robinson's debut. There's fewer of them, obviously it's from 1947, but as a whole, I think. Do you Jordan have one of those, Darren? Alone. Jackie Robinson debut tickets? I do not. Uh, I had a chance to buy one. Um, I had to take, I would have had to take it off the back of something. And I was worried about uh, the the wear and tear on it. I probably shouldn't have. That was a mistake. Yeah. Uh, but I do not have one of those. I do have, uh, I do have Bobby Orr's flying goal ticket. Uh, there's only four of them. 1970. Um, is, is Jordan memorabilia a good investment? 
or is it buying too high? I think it just depends. I just de- think it depends on on what it is, right? Like, so you know, at the high end, that eighty six Jordan Fleer, like, I mean, that that went down. I think it depends on what you're buying. Each you can't just say there was a there was a tweet recently that I put out where Patrick Mahomes, one of his greatest cards, has declined since he won the the, the two Super Bowls. And I think it's just based on, it's not just a factor. We're not just playing fantasy out here, right? There's a lot of factors behind this. How many were made? How many were kept? What What's the condition of them? And I think, you know, you just have to, I, I like one of ones. I also like to go contrarian, Dan. So like I brought you. Okay. Eight uncirculated, uncut dollar bills signed by Warren Buffett. You know, think that way. Okay. You know? Yeah. Now you have um, LeBron James debut game ticket stub signed by his mother. That 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 that's what that that's what actually sold last night. Uh, I bid on it. Um, I actually like that's just how you think in a contrarian way, Dan. Right? Like signed by his mother. When are you going to ever get his mother? You can get LeBron. But not his mother, and 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 from a storytelling standpoint, his mother as a single mother, and them going to three or four or five different places when he's growing up, part of his story, his and mom. and yeah. remarkably, right? LeBron James lived up to the hype. So I always like the the story you can tell. Let me show you one. And that here. sold for five thousand dollars yesterday. Yeah, I mean that's a good. That's I, for me. I think that's a good value. Let me okay. show you one. What else here. do you have here? Um, so. It was recently the 50th anniversary of Secretariat winning the Belmont. Uh, so this is signed by, this is the program. Okay. okay. Program is not rare. Not rare. This is signed by Ron Turcott, the jockey, of course. Yeah. But it's also signed by Secretary. Penny. Oh, no. I'm Secretary. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and there's a hoof print right yeah. here. Yeah. No. Uh, it's also signed by Penny Tweedy. Now, the owner. what's interesting about this is that Penny Chenery is the name that people know her by, right? That's her maiden name. She was married to Jack Tweedy while she was uh, wh- while she was the owner of Secretariat, and they got divorced five months later. So, what does this prove? Wow. This shows that this was signed contemporaneously during the, so this was signed before February 74. So like, you know, you think about these type of things. And I also think about when things look really cool. Like when you show it to someone and they say, wow, that's amazing. I think the greatest ticket ever made was Allen Iverson's debut. And it was actually Allen Iverson and Ray Allen in the same game, both their debuts. The reason why the ticket was incredible was because it was the opening of the core States center. So it was just the first game in the core state center. It wasn't because it was their debut. It just happens to be. And this is the ticket. You can see how big it is. Oh, wow. And what's cool is you can see, like, you could see that rookie Allen right there. I mean, you can see three Jerry Stackhouses and uh, Clarence Weatherspoon, too, and a Derek <laughs> Coleman. But, but, <laughs> but, but still, like, these are the cool things. Like, so when I tell people, what, when people say, what should I collect? I always say, collect something that will make people say, wow. We're talking to Darren Ravel, Action Network business reporter. I remember being in Craig Seger's bar in Atlanta. Seger had some... uh, uh, Dominique. uh, No, no. He had George Brett's jockstrap. He had Morgana's bra. Oh, I love Morgana. That's a good play. And he had some... uh, uh, Cow pies from Secretariat. He had some... uh, (laughs) <laughs> he, had, he had some poop from Secretariat, and he had it in a display window at his sports bar, Jocks and Jills. So I don't, you don't, you don't, you don't forget that. If it was just a Michael Jordan rookie, you know, <laughs> you, you might have forgotten it. But those are three items that. Oh, well, what's, I have a, I have a more, What's our Ryan but, Leaf jersey worth? The Colts jersey with Ryan's autograph on it. That, oh, that's a good one. I like that. The 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 draft pick that didn't happen. I didn't even know you had that. Yeah. Yeah. He wore it That's for a, a promo shoot, and then um, he ended up giving it to us. And so he signed his Colts jersey that he would have gotten at if they had not taken. I think. I, I think. I think that's. I think that's worth a solid eight thousand dollars. Wait, are you making me an offer? No. Uh, well, maybe after. 
No, I need more than that. No, you know what? I, I got so much stuff in here. I don't even know what's valuable. What's you your should... gra- what's your gra- oh, let me ask you this. What's your greatest piece? And what is your greatest regret of not taking something that someone offered to you? I saved everything. I but I don't I did I never collected to collect. I collected because I I just loved it. Um, but I, I don't have any regrets where I go. God, I should have because See, it's, it's interesting now that game used stuff is going crazy because so so at the end of the month, Michael Jordan's dream team jacket, the famous one that had the Reebok logo on it that yeah. he covered mm-hmm. is up for sale. I think it's a five to eight million dollar jacket that was given to Brian McIntyre. Wait, 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 Remember wait, wait, wait. Hold, on, hold on. Yeah, I know Brian worked at the NBA a long time. Five to eight million. Yes. Oh, boy. I asked Brian recently, I go, where was that? He's like, oh, it was just in my closet with all the other, uh, you know, stuff. Uh, but but who would know, right? And and it's it's just come upon us where there was a Jordan jersey that sold for $10 million and Brian saw that. And, you know, but Jordan just threw it to him. But, you he, know, Darren, and kept every, it. every time I did the Bulls winning the championship, I saw a transaction happen right in front of me. Every time Michael, when he won a title and he came in to sit with me on SportsCenter, he took his shoes off and handed them to the Chicago Bulls PR director. Tim Hallam. Yeah. Right in front of me, I saw that transaction where Mike autographed him and gave them to Tim. And Tim is actually auctioning them. I think it's Tim because there's there are signed uh, Jordans from every championship uh, that are uh, that's also up in Southern. Yeah, Beast. I saw it. So I don't know it's Tim, but I think it is Tim. Yeah, saw it right in front of me. Uh, I saw where, I saw where you bought uh, Ferris Bueller's vest from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I did the only one worn by Matthew Broderick. <laughs> how much? How much did it cost you? One hundred fifty-five thousand. <laughs> Can you Let wear me tell it you socially? That- no, I will never put it on my body. Okay. That would be very disrespectful. Okay, all right. So, but, okay. <laughs> but I will tell you, so the philosophy behind this is as game use stuff is going crazy, if LeBron's Game 7 jersey from the 2013 NBA Finals goes for $3.7 million, what is Ferris's vest? I don't know. Uh, Ferris's vest? See, I would I love mean, to have Indiana Jones's fedora. Yeah, that actually, there was actually one that sold. I don't know if it's one of one, but it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I'd love to have that. That makes sense to me. Yeah. What's your wife say when you go, honey, look what I bought? I don't tell her. (laughs) Luckily, she doesn't watch the Dan Patrick Uh, show. Well, she's uh, in the minority there because everybody, including everybody (laughs) in Denver, loves this show. Hey, great to talk to you as always. Uh, thanks for the uh, the insight. You got it. Take care, Dan. Darren Ravel, Action Network business reporter.